Yesterday, we discussed uh, due diligence on uh, hedge fund managers. Uh, today, we're talking about data. Uh, so, Pamela, how do you guys help private equity um, corporations, hedge funds, in uh, conducting due diligence? Yep, yeah, so, um, so due diligence, uh, you can use Vortexa to, um, most recent examples have been some of the um, latest vessels that have been sanctioned by the US government um, and, and the ongoing sanctions on, uh, on, on Russian, um, uh, it, 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 Russian trading uh, vessels, as well as Iranian vessels, but various um, by um, once, you know, the, the Russian invaded Ukraine, um, we had the, um, the sanctions start, um, and that was a few years back. Uh, and we've seen recently um, some, um, you know, breaking of those sanctions, of course, um, and, 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 and our data can give a hint in terms of um, who could possibly be doing that. So, um, so the due diligence has been uh, used by, by, by various firms, especially a kind of American physical traders um, who don't really want to um, appear to be using vessels that have been sanctioned or um, that have carried sanctioned material um, in the past. So um, that's, that's certainly um, a use case. What is tricky about that, of course, is um, you know, these vessels change hands, they change controllers, and it's really important. We talked about um, you know, the, the data validity of going in and really making sure that you're, um, you know, you're, you're exposing the correct data when it happens because it does change so often. And uh, some of the models can't necessarily always capture that. Thanks, Pamela. Uh, same question to you, Tom and uh, Sarah, on due diligence. Um, so I, essentially all of our data is used for due diligence in some capacity. So public company investors are, they're kind of just doing due diligence on the companies they're invested in using our data. Like are Duolingo's DAUs going to meet uh, market expectations? Um, where we run into a little bit of, of, of difficulty is more on the private side when there's a uh, one deal that someone's working on, and our data set is massive. It's, we have uh, millions and millions of apps that we're tracking. And so like, our price just doesn't work for someone who has like a, a six month or a two month project that they're doing due diligence on. And so um, while we're still working on solutions for that type of environment, like one thing we are thinking about is, is there partitioning that we can do um, where you, instead of getting the entire data set for the full price, you were getting uh, just the things that you care about that allow you to go deep and do the due diligence that you want in this one particular environment uh, right now. But in general, um, our data is incredibly useful for due diligence across the board, but the use case doesn't always match with the data set. Please go ahead. I would echo what Tom has said. I mean, a lot of our data is used for due diligence. Um, it doesn't have to be, but um, you know, even some of our brands will, will be checking on their retailers. They're checking, you know, inventory and pricing um, to make sure that they're honoring pricing con uh, contracts and agreements and availability within, you know, featured markets. Um, you know, and in the investment space, um, you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of checking of store locations. Are they open? Are the hours open? Are the items available? Um, you know, are they are there long wait lines? Um, you know, for various restaurants or delivery, um, you know, drivers. Um, you know, these are all indicators of you know how well a company is functioning, how well a market is functioning. Um, so you could call that due diligence or just kind of process due diligence. You know, investment yep. analysis. Mm -hmm. Investment analysis. Yep. Um, same question for, for for you, so we can clarify for everybody. Yeah, From your point of view, you guys are, you know, Ernst & Young is very different than, uh, than the other three entities here, so. Well, well, it's good that we're in the cutting room because this is on the cutting edge. And, uh, you know, like data-driven due diligence being the concept. Uh -huh. And so if an owner of a company asserts that their growth is a certain percentage and they have a certain number of customers and, and other factors, there should be data, data, you know, evidence, digital fingerprints that support those claims. And so that's one of the ways now that uh, it with, if provided you could get access, you know, depending upon how fast a, an acquisition or deal is happening, that you can validate, you know, important claims about the viability and health of a business. And, 
know, coming from a big four consultancy uh, advisor, I'm in the technical consulting uh, area for financial services of EY, which is, um, you know, of course, an accounting firm. We, we take a very evidence-based approach to due diligence and to data evaluation. You know, so if you make claims about the value of your data, which for uh, oddly, there's no gap standard today to determine the value of data. So you have to use different techniques, market value, discounted cash flow, um, uh, replacement costs, other methods. But in any case, as part of due diligence, there can be claims that are vital to the profile of the business that can be validated with data. And so just like an internal audit, you would seek that evidence to substantiate any claims.